Perfect. Joining me now here on the MMA Report is one a fighter that was scheduled to fight at CES 45, but unfortunately is unable to fight Dennis Piva. Dennis, as always, I appreciate the time. We got the news a couple weeks ago. You were you were stepping back inside competition, and then uh, I, I reached out to CES. I said, "Hey, let's let's book a, an interview with Dennis." Or like, well, Dennis actually doesn't have a fight anymore. He had to pull out of the fight. So uh, tell us what happened. Happened. Uh, yeah. So um. I, uh, I broke two small bones, uh, metatarsal uh, three and four fractures, hairline fractures in my left foot, throwing a kick during sparring. Um, you know, I've hurt the foot before in the past, and uh, it's been, I don't want to say like, very problematic, but sometimes I'll, I'll throw a kick and I'll hit it somewhere in that sweet spot and it'll swell up a little bit. But, you know, that's, that, that comes with, with training, that comes with fighting. You know, we, we deal with injuries all the time. Um, Liz, I know that I've had multiple fractures before in the past I never followed up on. <laughs> um, when they put my x-ray up on the board and he was showing me where the fractures were, he was pointing out some uh, calcium deposits in my foot and the areas I've had fractures before in the past they didn't really heal too well. So, uh, you know, he told me about four to eight weeks, depending on, on, on the healing process, uh, throwing the boot for a bit. And uh, you know, I'm walking on it now. I'm about to kind of move on it a little bit. And hopefully this next week we'll kind of get it back into some, somewhat training. But I'm going to baby it and there's it. Things happen. Um, and now we're hopefully uh, gunning for October if all goes well. And, and I saw on Instagram post, by the way, your OJ Simpson Instagram post was hilarious. <laughs> you know, it's funny. Uh, I, my wife's with him with me now. <laughs> we're, uh, we're following now. Uh, yes. Comical, man. If everybody knows how I am, I, I like to joke, man. I like to laugh. But uh, when it comes to fight time, I like to fight. So. It, I was literally, I was sitting on the couch. I saw that. I showed my wife. I go, oh, you got to look at this. This is just straight up hilarious. Uh, so I uh, got to give you kudos on that one. That, that's uh, That was a good Instagram post. If anyone hasn't seen that post, you definitely should check that out. But I, I noticed a couple other Instagram posts that you had recently. One where you said, been too long since I've had this feeling, and the feeling was you on top of the cage. Another one that you wrote is, just want this feeling again. Um, is frustrated? The, the right way to kind of describe the, the feelings you have currently with being unable to compete uh, coming up on the 11th? Most definitely, man. It, it, it's a packed card. Um, I, I love fighting. It um, it brings the best out of me. I, I like the lifestyle I live when I'm in a full training camp. And tech is, is to get that time. Um, I'm at my best when I'm in fight mode. And, and that's just a fact. Um, you know, it, it is frustrating because I'm, I'm not getting any younger. Uh, you know, I'm not saying I'm old or I'm, I'm outdated for the age I'm at 29, but, uh, you know, I'm going to be, you know, looking at being a father at some point in the next few years and, and moving on to a professional work life uh, that's, you know, going to carry out. So it's frustrating because these are the prime years you're going to get. You know, your late 20s, early 30s are the best years you're going to get. If it, if it's gonna I mean, depending on who you are, you, know, you get guys like Randy Couture that fought for the 40 something years old, Dan Henderson. I'm, I'm probably not going to be that guy who fights that that late to their life, but uh, it is frustrating because I just I want that feeling. You can't describe what it's like to be in front of that that cage, your arm raised after pouring the life into it for the last eight, twelve weeks, depending on how long the camp is. Um, nothing that could satisfy that that feeling, but that that sensation, but that 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 winning sensation, that winning feeling. So yeah, it's definitely frustrating. So fighters always talk about not letting the frustrations of the fight life bring them down in normal life. How, how do you make sure that you make sure you don't take those frustrations home with you when, when you can't, you can't fight? You know, everybody kind of treats it differently. Um, I try to live a happy life. You know, I spend a lot of time with my wife, uh, my family, my friends when I'm not training or I'm not working. I do work a lot. And I think a lot of times I, I kind of bury myself in work when I'm not in training. I kind of like keep my mindset focused on something else other than fighting. But, you know, after you kind of go through the motions of, like I've, I've said before in the past, feeling like I'm like a humanoid, just, you're going through the motions of feeling like you're a normal person. You're not living the life you're really destined to live. You know, it's like I said, I function better when I'm, when I'm training, but when I'm not, I just bury myself with work. And when I'm not working, I try to bring myself with friends. I try to keep my mind preoccupied uh, as positively as possible. How are you keeping your uh, mind occupied at this point when you when you know you can't you can't uh, you know go in there and do what you do best on the 11th? Yeah, um, 
it is. It is. It is difficult at times. Um, but you know, wins and losses they come and go, and at some point, you know, I'm not going to be able to fight anymore. And I have to keep that in mind. You know, there is there's means to an end when it comes to fighting. You don't fight forever. It's you know, I'm, I'm not going to be fighting until I'm 60 some odd years old. So as I'm, you know, getting older and, and different things are coming up in lives, friends are getting married, kids are popping out. Um, the focus is starting to fixate more on, on the long term effects. You know, um, of what I got to achieve. And hopefully, fighting will always be there at some point, but I, I know at some point it is going to come to an end. So. You look at 2016, you only had one fight. So far in 2017, you've only had one fight. With all the amount of downtime you have had over the last year and a half or so, have, have you found yourself looking at the fight game any differently? Yeah, because you know you see a lot of uh, a lot of younger guys, up and comers, coming in, and, and they're getting a lot of uh, attention. And yeah, man, oh. <laughs> that's a, that's a good question. Um, yeah, I mean, with the downtime, I try to learn, man. I try to watch a lot of videos. You know, I try to keep my mind going, my mind being involved. And sometimes I feel like when I go back, I've matured different ways during training. You know, I, I realize that, you know, sometimes you're, you're constantly just training physically, physically, physically. You're not learning mentally. Um, for me, anyways, and that's, that's it's worked out for me. I'm different than other people. You know, a lot of people have to constantly stay grinding. I'm not saying that when I'm uh, not training, I'm getting better at the sport in, in total because physically you're not the same. But sometimes you need, you need that mental break. You need to focus on, on life, um, at least for me. In terms of, you know, evolving as a martial artist now, I mean, obviously you can't use your foot, but are you still in the gym working on other things? You're saying, hey, I can't use my foot, but I can still do other things. Uh, no, you know, I want to make sure that I keep the time to heal properly. Um, knowing that I've had previous injuries in that foot before, I wanted to kind of take the time out and, and let it heal functionally. So when I go back, I don't chance throwing a lazy kick and, and getting hurt again. Um, so, you know, lately it's just, it's really been work. I'm working on my house, um, renovating and trying to get things caught up there. I've been renovating for the last year and a half now, but, you know, I do it in stride. So, um, you know, it, it, so much, I, like I said, I work a lot. I'm a director of warehousing for my company. I travel up and down the East Coast. So when it comes to that for training camp, I have to kind of prepare myself with my normal life to make the time to invest in, in the training and fighting. You know, there are a lot of fighters that they, that's it's all they got. They work part time jobs and they train full time, and that's that's the, that's their life. I, I don't have that benefit. Um, I, I work an extensive job. I have a lot of responsibility. I manage over 120 employees uh, between seven accounts in six states. So that that keeps me on my toes there. But um, yeah, it's just that's that's what I do, man. I work or I train, and it's hard to do both at the same time. So. I have to schedule my time properly and accordingly when, I, when the fights come up. Um, so you, when you say renovating your house, like, are you doing all the renovating or are you paying somebody to do it? No, I'm doing a lot of the work myself. Um, the only thing I don't do is any plumbing or electrical, but everything else, it's it's with these bare hands of mine. <laughs> <laughs> See, I just pay everyone. I'm like, you know what? I'll probably screw it up in some way, so I'll just pay somebody to come do it. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean I've learned... A lot throughout the years, I worked with my uncle as as a young guy. Mainly, it was like painting and plastering, hanging up sheetrock, and little and ends. And you learn as you go along. You mentioned about October it is uh, kind of when you're targeting to return. Have you at all targeted somebody in the Northeast that, that fights for CES that uh, it, it, that you want to fight, or is it like you know, look, it's still a long time no, away. We'll see what happens. I've never been one to call people out like that. I mean, a lot lately, a lot of the guys have been fighting aren't from the area. Um, I think Cody Norby was the last guy I fought from the local area that I can recall. Um, everybody else has pretty much come from afar. Uh, Jordan came from um, – my last fight came, came, came from Albuquerque. The guy before that came from Vegas. fight before that was Norby. fight before that, the guy came in from Sao Paulo, Brazil. Um, I haven't fought a lot of local guys as of lately. Um, and I think once you're kind of in the top 10 or in the top, top top five of the division, you really should focus on fighting guys on a national basis. Because if you're constantly fighting the same guys in the region, you're really not growing as much as you probably should. Um, or at least getting the eyes, the attention fixated on you. Yeah, I mean, there's a few guys I, I, I would I would like to step in there with in a local scene that, you know, just to say for the fight purposes. But no one that's really... Like I have a hard on to go go after. No, it's just whoever they throw in front of me, man. 
let me <laughs> unless the numbers unless unless the check's gonna get bigger <laughs> on, on, on the Hawaii flight, then just put someone in front of me and I'm ready to go. And there seems to be a lot of attention right now on the Northeast scene. We, we've seen some guys go into the Contender Series. Uh, obviously, did not work out well for Matt. Uh, but, you know, Carlos uh, Candelario's got a fight coming up. Mike Rodriguez has got a fight coming up. Uh, Calvin Cater's fighting in the UFC this weekend. I mean, it, it, do you at all feel like that maybe finally the UFC is finally starting to really pay attention to the Northeast? Most definitely so. You know, I, I, I tell people a lot um, – and I think it's a fact. And the Northeast has a lot of killers. Um, it, it's a small knit community up here. You know, a lot of the schools, you get a lot of guys that cross train different schools. I, you know, I train with Calvin Cater. I sit your tongue. You go on the Triforce. You got Nate Andrews over there. Uh, I've gone down to Connecticut and trained with Matt Bissett uh, a couple times before in the past as well. Um, you, you get a lot of high level guys in this area. That's why you don't see a lot of guys coming out of New England with, with like the O, the O factor, you know, guys will take losses here because the, the level competition is a lot higher. You got a lot of great, uh, schools out this way between Sitya Tong, Junico, and, you know, um, you know, South Shore Sport Fighting has been doing a lot of good things as of, as of lately and so far in the past. I mean, you got a lot of good schools out this way, man. A lot of, a lot of people making noise, um. And that's why the attention is being fixated. I think when Dana White came out to Maine, did that, you know, searching talent tour mm-hmm. thing, what he was doing, he kind of got a view of what it was like. I mean, he's from the area, if I'm not mistaken. He is a Boston guy. Yeah. Um, so, I, he, he, you know, you, you want to go national. When, when you got an organization like that and you're growing, you want to grow. You want to go nationally. Um, so you're always going to look for talents on all edges of the country. Um, but I think there is a high level of competition that comes out of the Northeast, and, and it's, it's starting to be noticed now, and, and, and it's a good thing. A little couple of quick uh, off MMA questions. Uh, what, what are you watching on TV right now? What am I watching on TV? What have we been doing? Gotham. Gotham. That's it. We've been catching up on Gotham. Um, I went a, a few times not not watching episodes. Um, what we fell fell kind of short of watching a few seasons. So we're now playing catch up. Um, we do that. We do Brickleberry, the Daniel Taj show. That's that's pretty funny. It's comical. Family Guy, America Dad. Um, I, I stick to simple shows. I don't like to think too much. Because when you sign a chase a series down, you don't want people like you know popping up on your on your Facebook feed and <laughs> blowing up. You know, if you haven't caught an episode, you know, I look at something like I, I never watch any of the Breaking Bad, never watch any of the um the what was the motorcycle one, uh, the Game of Thrones. I don't watch any of that stuff because it, the, they've already been out for so long. I feel like I'm so behind the bar that everybody else is already you know ahead of the game. For me to play catch up and get caught up, take too long. I don't get the kind of time. So I watch shows that I don't have to keep up with. You know, funny stuff. I've never watched one Game of Thrones episode. Nah, see me either. I don't blame you. See, we're and, and we're, we're in the my, we're in the extreme minority. I, I I my buddies will say you've never watched one episode. I go no, never watched one episode. Never, you know. I I remember when Twenty Four was huge. Never watched one episode. Never got no. into it. You have a series you follow or anything, or just uh... everything's Netflix for me. Um, yeah. I just started watching uh, what's it called a uh, Snowfall on FX. Uh, okay. but, uh, for me, I'm just, I'm so busy with other things going on that if it's not on Netflix, I probably don't watch it. Well, I'll tell you what, here's a good one to watch. I believe it is on Netflix. Uh, black mirror. That is something okay. new I started watching recently. I'm like three episodes in every episode. is like a different storyline and it's all like just mind boggling, almost like borderline grotesque type stuff. Not so much gory, but you'd have to watch it to see it, man. It's a lot of, uh, mind fuckery. See, when it comes to Netflix, I binge watch it, especially on the weekends when I really don't have much going on. I'll watch like four or five episodes in a row of something. And then I just realized like, oh, man, I need to go to the gym. I need to go do something instead of sitting around doing nothing. Uh, I don't blame you, man. You know, I'm, I'm sure you're a busy guy. And, and you, you know, like myself, I, when I'm not working, I'm not training, I'm, I just want to do nothing. I just want to sit and not feel the, the rush or, or the, the that like the feeling of like having to be somewhere. Like sometimes I'll sit down on a weekend where I don't have anything going on and I'll feel like I'm, I'm out of sort because we're always on the go. There's always something going on. It's always an event. It's always a friend's party. It's always a family gathering of some mm-hmm. sort on birthday, baptism, communion. It's just always something. So when you get free time, your body kind of tells you like we should be doing something. Although you're mentally like, I really don't got anything going on. The couch just feels so much better. <laughs> <laughs> the couch is my domain, man. I live in the dog house. <laughs> But, uh, you know, you mentioned about you still you're, you're watching a lot of MMA fights uh, for you. What is there fights coming up that uh, you want to watch for just because that's the type of MMA that you enjoy? Uh, I do. I mean, I mean, 
obviously the, the, the Jones Cormier too is going to be huge. You know, um, I've been a big fan of Jones for a long time. I like Daniel Cormier, but I've, I'm probably rooting for John. I think he's overcome a lot uh, inside and outside of the cage and, and nobody's perfect. Um, and to see that guy be back in the game and, and see what he brings back to the table after the layoff he's been on. I'm, I'm interested to seeing that. Um, Rob Font, one of my teammates, mm-hmm. he's been on a tier lately. It was so great to see him do so well uh, on that UFC, the last UFC card. Um, when I see people in the local area doing well, whether it's people I've trained with, people, you know, schools we fought against or anything like that, I always root for someone from the area. I want people on the area to do well, so I'll follow those guys more, more than anybody. I, the one thing I've said about John Jones is I think uh, the narrative after UFC 214 is people are going to forget how good he was and is. Um, I, I've been on record. I, I think he's going to win by submission within the first three rounds. Yeah, submission, huh? I, I, I wouldn't. I would disagree. I would disagree. I, I have. I have more of a feeling that because Cormier is hungry, man. He really, really wants that win. It, it, it's it's crazy to see two guys that are so mentally driven over one another. You know, they, they really are like they're, they're, they're their own worst enemy, like uh, within their own mindset, you know. But I, I think it, it can go either way. Um, but I want to see Jones go and, and, and take it to him. I thought, know, the, so. I thought the great point Jones brought up, and, and I think you can relate to this, since the fact of he's been on the sidelines for a year, DC has no idea what he's been working on. You know, you had your, your most recent win was, you know, your first fight in over a year where your opponent didn't know what you've been working on. That's why I do wonder if DC is going to kind of try to feel him out, maybe for a full round, just kind of see exactly what he's been working on and maybe he has to alter his game plan. Yeah, well, he's saying he's going to stand and bang with them, and I wouldn't advise that being the smartest plan. I mean, Jones has got, what, like a like 10-inch reach on him? Yeah. Um, I think if, if, if Daniel's smart enough, he's going to try to wrestle him, try to put the heat on him, try to put the pressure on him, kind of uh, – you know, use the cage and try to like out, not out muscle him in that sense, but use his wrestling to his advantage. He didn't really do that that well last time. He got shut down. I think he only got one takedown against. I don't even know how many takedowns that John got. And John's a phenomenal wrestler too. Uh, so that, that that game can go go both ways. But we'll we'll see, man. You know the fight game. Anything can happen. <laughs> exactly, Anything. exactly. You never know what what's going on in, inside that camp. But Dennis, as always, I appreciate the time. Uh, let everyone know where they can follow you out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, where they can uh, see some of your hilarious uh, pictures. <laughs> Pretty much, man. I think all across the board, uh, you, you know, Facebook, I have, the, I have the fan page, Sweet Bread, um, Instagram, Sweet Bread 135, was an underscore, Sweet Bread underscore 135, not mistaken. Snapchat, same thing, Sweet Bread 135. Um, I, I, I keep it simple because I don't want to have too many different aliases and two different websites. But uh, yeah, anybody wants to follow me, go for it, man. I'm 